So in this video, we're going to talk about capital gain taxes in the United States. So when you're investing, it is very important to know how much capital gain do you need to pay and whether it is worth it or not. So that's what we're going to dive into. You know, do you know what is short term capital gain? Do you know what's long term capital gain? And what are the different scenarios based on the amount of income you're making and how much capital gain taxes do you have to pay? So let's get started. So how much capital gain tax do you pay for stocks in the United States? The goal of this series is really to help you save a thousand or ten thousand or even a hundred thousand dollars in taxes. And this is the second video when it comes to investing tax. And previously we covered the Canadian side. So now we're going to cover the US side. In the future, I'm also going to cover a couple of tax planning strategies to help you make better decisions, whether you want to become a day trader, a long term investor or you want to save on taxes completely. Now, before we start, I just want to celebrate another success story from Alan, where he made 90% gain from FedEx. And Brad also made 58% from SPCE and 41% from Lululemon in four months. So one of my favorite things about this case study is that Brad was actually telling his wife that he was going to buy Amazon but the wife thought he wants her to shop on Amazon. So then she went on shopping instead. So you can pause this video and read this case study. So now in terms of the 100 likes giveaway campaign for this video, the book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So if you haven't read this book before, then I would definitely recommend it because it really changes your mindset in terms of being an employee, being an investor, being a business owner and being self-employed. So it's one of my favorite personal finance books. And if you leave a comment below, click like on this video. And once we reach 100 likes, I'll select a winner to get a copy of this book for free. So make sure you gently tap the like button on this video. So let's get started. Now, let's start by looking at capital gain tax. And there are two types of capital gain tax in USA. One is short term and one is long term. And it's very, very simple for the short term tax. It's basically like day trading, short term trading as when you hold on to the investment for less than one year. And if you hold on to the investment for less than one year, then it is taxed the same way as your regular income. Now, if you end up holding on to the investments for more than one year and then you get three different tax rates, which is 0%, 15% and 20% depending on how much income you make. So I went online and I found a tax calculator called smartasset.com. So here it is. And I did a couple of scenarios. If you're living in California, based on how much income you make, how much taxes would you be paying? Now, when it comes to capital gain tax, we're going to focus on long term capital gain tax in this video. And there are two levels. One is where you pay to the federal government and one is where you pay to the state. And for federal, like I mentioned earlier, is 0, 15 and 20 percent, depending on how much money you're making and state. It depends on the state and the highest capital gain tax is California, where the state taxes is 13.3 percent. So that's actually quite high. And when you combine it, your taxes can somewhere between 25 to 30 something percent. And for the next highest is Hawaii, Oregon and Minnesota and the lowest states are uh, listed here, for example, Texas, for example, Florida, for example, Alaska. So if you want to save on your capital gain taxes, then you might consider moving to one of these states. OK, so in terms of the scenarios that we will go through first, I'm going to assume you are a full time professional making over 150 K a year, probably some sort of tech job. And this means you're almost at the highest tax bracket. The second scenario is that if you're a retired person and you're making zero dollars, and this is the most extreme scenario and you're at the lowest tax bracket. So first, let's look at the professional one. Now, if you're a professional making 150K a year, it means you're almost at the highest tax bracket, but not yet. So here you will see that I entered $150,000 for annual income. And then afterwards, there is a capital gain of $30,000 and I selected more than one year for length of ownership and you're living in California. So that means you will get taxed 4,500 at the federal level and 2,790 at the state level. So together, 
it's around 25%. When it comes to capital gain tax, then you'll be paying $7,290. Okay, now what if you don't invest? What if you just work harder, you get some overtime, and you, instead of 150K, you make 180K. Now in that case, you will be paying just purely income tax, your employment income, and here is the calculation for it. With investing, you pay 45K in taxes, which I've showed you earlier, and if you work and not invest at all, you'll pay 47K. So that means by working harder to earn that 30K, you actually pay 2K more in taxes. And that means you have less money in your pocket at the end of the day when you work harder. That's a bit counterintuitive, isn't it? And that means you can use that $2,000 to buy cheeseburgers if you want to, buy a PlayStation 5 if you want to, you can pay for a month's rent if you want to, by investing and getting 30% and paying less taxes, you actually save yourself a ton of work and money as well. So now let's jump to the other scenario. What if you are making $0 at the lowest tax bracket and you make 30K in capital gains? Now in that case, you'll be paying $235 in taxes and you can see in the calculation shown on the right. Now, if you don't invest and you work to make 30K instead, you will be paying $3,097 in taxes. And when you compare that to capital gain of 235, you're actually getting taxed a lot more for working. In a way, you're being penalized for being employed because you're paying employment income tax, you're paying payroll taxes, so on and so forth. So it's much better to invest 100K and make 30% than to work harder and make 30K. Now, of course, there's gonna be a balance between the amount of income you make and also versus the amount of capital gain you make. But if you can choose between the two on any given day, then you will choose capital gain because this gives you more money in the pocket at the end of the day. In terms of cheeseburgers, that's 1,400 cheeseburgers that you save by investing. That is three PlayStation 5s. That is one and a half months of rent. So by working instead of investing, when you're retired, you are really losing 14 cheeseburgers a year. And in a future video, I'll teach you how to save you know, more cheeseburgers, how to save on more taxes when you invest $100,000 in the market. And before we wrap up, I just want to finish with a quote from Winston Churchill about taxes. Can a people tax themselves into prosperity? Can a man stand in a bucket and lift himself up by the handle? And this is very interesting because Right now we're in the post-pandemic period. And obviously there was a lot of money printing. There was a lot of money handed out through CERB and other means. And the consequence is that in the future years, there's gonna be higher taxes to repay that amount of money printing or mm -hmm. loans got from the government, so on and so forth. And the question is, well, does increased taxes really increase the amount of prosperity in the country? And does increased taxes actually speed up economic activity in the country? And that's gonna be such an important decision and topic that I wouldn't be able to cover in this video, but I think just by showing you how capital gain versus employment income are being taxed, you can start to understand how the government is trying to incentivize you. And now you can imagine if you are a person that don't know how taxes work, if you are a person that are just trying to work hard and be a good American citizen, are you really maximizing the amount of money in your pocket? And at the end of the day, are you taking the most money back home? And that's why taxes is so important. And when it comes to my vision for myself, my goal is really to make 30% return a year from the market. I have gone through the journey from learning by myself for eight years, trying a ton of strategies that didn't work, and I was struggling, losing money, I was losing more than $10,000 to mastering investing, spending only one to two hours a week and making 30% a year. And now I teach people how to invest in the market in a four weeks coaching program called Investing Accelerator. So these are really the case studies from Investing Accelerator where Alan made 90% from FedEx, where Brad made 58% from SPCE and also 41% from Lululemon in four months. So that is pretty amazing. And I have a lot more of these case studies to share with you in the future. So if you wanna learn more, then you can click on the very, very first link below, which is the free webinar, 
how to get 30% from the market. So if you click on that, then this will bring you to the registration page where you can attend a four hour webinar. This webinar is an absolute beast, insane in terms of the amount of content I've packed through it. So make sure you grab a cup of coffee before you start watching. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about who pays more taxes. Are dividend investors paying more taxes? Are growth investors paying more taxes? And this is a crucial concept because when it comes to retirement planning, when it comes to you know, retiring earlier, you want to have a clear understanding of what kind of income you're making, how much you're making, and what is the after-tax amount. And this is geared towards Canadian investors. So if you are a Canadian watching this video by some chance, then this video is definitely for you. And you'll be surprised by the results. So I'll see you in the next one.